Good afternoon, everybody. It is April 27th, 2023, and welcome to episode 11 of Wheelhouse Knits. It has been a hot minute since I have been here. Um, it's been about almost two months, I think. We have been dealing with back-to-back -back daycare plagues in our house that Sawyer has lovingly shared with me. So um, I haven't had a voice for the better part of a month and a half. Um, so it just wasn't pretty and I was not really feeling great. So I had intended to podcast a couple weeks ago, but we are just getting hit with all of the bugs. Um, we've been healthy for about a week and a half now and um, I'm hoping it continues. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Wheelhouse Knits. Um, I think this is episode 11, I think I said, and I'm going to apologize about the glare off of my glasses right off the bat. Um, I can't really do anything about it. Unfortunately, usually I wear my contacts, uh, just because of the glare, but I am going through some ongoing concussion issues and I am not allowed to wear my contacts right now. Um, so I'm sorry. It is what it is. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, my three hour eye exam this week, um, yeah, that was fun. Anyways, I digress. Um, so yeah, it's been a really long time since I had podcasted. So I have a lot to show you. So I'm sorry if this is a little bit of a longer episode. Um, I'm going to jump right in this sweater. Um, I can't remember what it's called and my phone is occupied right now. So I'll put it on the bottom of the screen um, it is a bulky weight sweater and it is so comfy. I don't wear it enough. I just pulled it out. I love purple. Um, yeah, I'll put it down there. I knit this last year when Sawyer had COVID and I had to isolate with him. It's just a super basic sweater. It's, um, I can't, I don't even remember what this yarn is. This is terrible. It's, it's been a while. So, um, but I really loved the fit on this one. So, um, just came home from Costco and threw this on because Adam's got the air conditioning on. So it's a bit chilly in here. Okay. I don't even know where to begin because I feel like it has been so long. Um, I'm going to begin. I'll just pull something out. So I will say that I've been to a yarn festival since I have podcasted last and I did some emotional shopping. So I'm gonna show that all at the end, but I do have a few purchases sprinkled throughout that are that already have projects in them. Um, and this is one of them. So this is a Yellow Petal Handmade bag. I just purchased this um, recently. I got, she had like a summer kind of update and I got this one and one with trailers on it. So she is uh, kind of local to me. She's in Nova Scotia. I'm in New Brunswick. So this bag, I love her bags. This bag came from her and it has, I purchased this yarn, um, around like before Christmas time. And I had wanted to knit it for my mom for, for Christmas, but I didn't get to it. It is Area 51 Stronger Together. And it is a colorway where the proceeds went for mental health. Um, my grandmother really struggled a lot with her mental health. And so my family are advocates for that, um, you know, and mental wellness. So I know this sock will mean a lot to my mom. I cast it on last Friday. I went to Fiddle Fiddlehead Fiber Festival with um, a lot of our local New Brunswick knitters. I cast it on at 3 p.m. on Friday and I finished this sock on Sunday. Um, so it's self-striping. Nine inch circulars, 64 stitches. I did 60 rounds for the leg, heel flap and gusset, and then I do 70 rounds for the foot. And then this is a uh, Nancy Knit Sip Happy's rounded toe that she has in her patterns that I really like. So this is gonna be for my mom for Mother's Day. And I've gotta pick up some things to go with it. So that is sock number one. I just barely have the second sock cast on. It's um, a vanilla sock. I think these stitch markers might be new. 
They're from Katrinkles. I can't remember if I showed them before or not. I got them at my local yarn shop. So, vanilla sock. Getting it done for Mother's Day. And I have a skein of this for myself as well um, to knit a pair up. So that's, I think that'll be really special. Um, my grandmother and grandfather's birthdays are like end of May, early June, and my grandmother passed away in June. So I think it'll, it'll be good. It'll bring some memories for my mom. Okay. This bag's new too, from Yellow Petal Handmade. It was a separate purchase, but I'm a sucker for a bag and for Rifle Paper Co. Okay, this is a judgment-free zone. I have been pretty good on my purchases and I that that's gone, that's gone. This is a gluttonous yarn episode. It's a one-off. Don't judge me, okay? Um, so this is a new bag and new yarn <laughs> inside. Um, so this yarn, I've got the first sock done. I purchased a 50 gram skein of self-striping sock yarn from Area 51, a Canadian dyer. This is I'm Seeing Rainbows. And it comes vacuum sealed, which is amazing. So letter mail shipping. This 50 gram skein, it's like around $20 or 22 to 25 Canadian, I think. And then letter, letter mail shipping, I think was like five bucks. So very, very economical. Um, same thing. I just, I was trying to play with how long I could make um, the leg and ha still have enough for the foot. So I measured this every step of the way just to make sure that I didn't run out because I don't really have a good, uh, like I have a, a recipe for a tall sock that works really well when I have a 100 gram skein, but I don't have a good recipe for a 50 gram skein just to make sure that I don't run out of yarn because I like a heel flap and gusset, um, this takes a little bit more yarn. Um, I did do contrasting. It's just opal. I got a ball from my local yarn shop. Um, it's this Fabra. It's just white. So that is just for the contrast. So from what I have left from the first skein, is this so I did 30 rounds here for the leg before I did the contrast heel flap and then I did my normal 70 rounds for the foot um I wasn't sure how this was gonna affect my usage so um anyways I was conservative because I didn't want to run out of yarn but I have this much left and I definitely think I could have gone another five to 10 rounds here on the leg just to make it a little bit longer. So I have several more skeins coming of 50 grams. <sighs> so I'm gonna try for that. Um, so this is sock number one. I have sock number two cast on and I'm actually in like the worst place possible to show you. <laughs> I'm on the heel flap in the middle of a row um so yeah i've got the the second sock started these are so fun they're so springy and just cheerful so i saw these and i needed to pick me up because we have had a hard couple months just with illness and um yeah hasn't really been fun so this was a mental pick me up both of these were actually, um, and I can't wait to finish them. And then I've got <clears throat> kind of an idea of what my 50 gram sock is gonna look like. Um, she has a ton of colorways that she dyes and she has some Hercules colorways that she did, a uh, Hades and Zeus. And Hercules is my all time favorite Disney movie. So I couldn't resist those. Um, We've also gone to see the Mario movie last weekend 
and Sawyer is obsessed with Mario. We went with his best friend uh, and our they live two houses down. They're six months age difference. So um, I ordered one skein of Mario and one skein of Luigi, 50 grams. They're both five, five and a half. Um, so I'm gonna make them each a pair of socks and do one Mario, one Luigi for each boy. So they get uh, set. And I don't know how, like I'm sure I'll have enough, they're five and a half. So, but I don't know um, how big that I need to make Sawyer sock. I haven't knit him a sock in a while. And so I'm gonna cast on a pair of these. He saw this skein and picked it out. It's Knit Picks Felici. Um, this is, I've had this in my stash for several years. So mm, 66367. Um, so I'm going to cast this on, get an idea of sock fit for him before I do the Mario ones, but it, that should be coming any day now. Um, and he loves rainbows, so he'll like this. So that's my plan for that. So I'm getting a little bit of usage out of the 50 gram skeins and future knitting. Okay. Um, wow, Amsterdam. I love this bag. Adam got it for me for a gift. This is a new muscle bear hat. So the creative knitter posted, um, I don't know if it was on her stories or on her, on like an Instagram grid. I can't really remember, but she was knitting a muscle bear hat out of I think it's this exact same colorway, but it was um, Lillian Pine, and which she carries in her shop. And I just went, oh, I need to knit that. That yarn is beautiful and springy. See, I needed I needed some happy yarn, so I immediately went to her shop, purchased it, and it came. And I cast on a new Musselboro hat. So this is uh, Lillian Pine, and it's the Pixie Sticks colorway. It's eighty twenty. I've never knit with this yarn before, but it is, <laughs> it's been traveling with me. So it's in, it's been in my work bag. So this skein is a little squished. Um, so this is my muscle bar hat. This is my third one because I have one that I finished since I have recorded last. So um, I'm using 2.53 millimeter so US 2.53 millimeter for this hat. And I'm just in the round and round as you go knitting. This will just be on the go knitting. The garbage truck's here, sorry if you can hear it. Um, so yeah, this is my new muscle burrow that I have on the needles. It is a pattern by Yzolda Teague, super straightforward. Um, really, really lovely to knit. Sawyer has now asked for one but he can't, and a red sweater, but he, he can't have all the things at once. I think he was like, he picked out the rainbow sock yarn and then was like, why don't I have a pair of socks, mommy? I'm like, things take time. <laughs> Leave me alone and I will work on it, but that doesn't happen. Anyways, um, so yeah, this was totally an influence pick and I couldn't be happier. I'm definitely gravitating more towards some spring colors now that the weather is getting nicer. So that's my muscle burr hat. <laughs> And I seem to always keep them in this bag. So, um, I've been watching the crazy sock lady and I've been influenced hard by scrappy Sunday posts on Instagram. So I have cast on a cozy memory blanket, which I've never knit before. I'm very into blankets right now but I'm into like the scrappy blankets. Like I have my um, advent blanket still in the needles and I am working on that and making some progress, but not really anything to show you yet. Um, I have enough other things to show you right now. So this in my favorite fat squirrel bag. I can't even with this bag. So this project did not exist last time I podcasted. And um, I started it, so this is it here. 
So this was square one and I've gone over and up. Now, I have been knitting this on 2.5 millimeter needles and I, um, I know a lot of people have the signature needles for these, but those are American and the exchange rate right now in Canada is astronomical. So I have been using a long circular needle. It was just what I grabbed. Um, and I have knit every single one of these squares with the long circular needles, except yesterday after chatting with my friend Chrissy, I tried DPNs. These are bamboo. I got these when I very first started sock knitting and I hate DPNs. I'm really only using these as straight needles. Um, so I have knit every square except one with the circulars. I wonder if you can guess which square I knit with the DPNs. <laughs> it's this wonky square at the bottom. So, um, yeah, this square here, it is fingering weight yarn. Um, definitely my gauge changed quite a bit when I went to the straight needles. So I think I'm going to just cut this out and go back to the circulars. So, um, I started this just with, it was going to be my scraps from 2023. So like these were, most of these were test knits for Nancy Knit Sip Happy. These were test knits for her. So was this one, actually this one, this one, this one were all test knits for Nancy. These were my um, Christmas Eve cast on socks. That was from my, a sweater I finished. And these are an upcoming test knit for Nancy that's not out yet. Um, but then I was having so much fun knitting this that I had I didn't have any more yarn from objects that I'd finished in 2023, but I wanted to keep knitting this. So I just started grabbing scraps from my, my um, I have one of these baskets just full of scraps and I have them in separate plastic bags based on color. So I was just grabbing out of there and picking what brought me joy. So, so far this is it, but this square has to go. And I think it's back to the circulars. Um, this is so fun. And I have done other than like the last few that I've done, I have ends woven in because I know if I don't do it, I'll never do it. Never. I hate weaving in ends. And really it's so quick when you do a couple at a time. So like all of these ones have their ends woven in these ones, other than the ones that have the center join where I just knit these squares, they're all woven in too. So yeah, cozy memories. I'm really, really enjoying it a lot. Um, and Adam even was like, oh, did you start a new blanket? I love like the knit blankets. They're so nice to like have a nap under on the couch. Like they have a really nice weight, but they're not too hot. So Adam approved and um this I think this bag will be good to accommodate it for a while because it's it's nice and big so um this is my last thing I'm gonna show you and I hate I hate that about my watch um I don't even know where to begin with this one so two weeks before the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival, I decided I was going to knit myself a new sweater for to wear to the festival because I, I like a deadline knit. I like to work under pressure and I, it was the first time I had gone to a festival with my friends in a while. I just felt like we were spending the night. Um, I wanted to have something new to wear. Hadn't finished a sweater in a while. So I, I picked a pattern on Ravelry. I'm not even, I don't even think I'll tell you the name of this sweater because I don't have good things to say about it. Um, and part of that is my own fault. This sweater, I know better. And I just picked the pattern because I really liked it. And 
I should have just never picked this pattern because there were red flags that I ignored. And now of course I am not happy with the pattern. Like the pattern itself is not great. Um, so it's really my own, own fault. There were only 12 finished um, projects on Ravelry. It was from a designer that is not like, doesn't regularly have patterns out. Like it's not one of the popular designers that you feel confident like that's been tech edited well and you have confidence in that it was tested appropriately. This one, everybody in the finished object pictures that I saw in Ravelry, Ravelry was um, not my body shape. They were small. And I should have, I should have just walked away. But I really liked the lace on the front. So I did it. I started it anyways. And now I think I'm gonna rip the whole thing out because it's not bringing me joy. So, this is what the front of the sweater should have looked like. Okay, lace front, beautiful lace front. And I didn't read the pattern like some people get their pattern and they read the whole pattern through and then they start knitting. I didn't do that. And I never do that and I should. This was a lesson in that. I get my pattern. I'm a step-by-step -step instruction person. I start at one and I go from there. I do not generally read a pattern all the way through. I should. And I probably will going forward because I'm frustrated with this. So I have knit a ton of sweaters. I do a lot of test knitting for various different socks, hats, cowls. I've test knit sweaters before. So like I'm pretty comfortable with reading a pattern and, you know, evaluating it. So this is what this sweater should have looked like. I'll show you again lace all over the front. This is what mine looks like. So I have a lace panel in the middle and then off to the side, I have stockinette and I'm not going to try it on because it's depressing, but this is so I have a 45 inch, inch bust. Um, so a couple problems with this is that you're told to do the like lace repeat here, but it never, ever, ever says like once you increase so many stitches on the sides, like move it over. And by the time I had realized what was happening, like, oh, it's not moving over. It, it was like way down here. And then I would have had to like rip this whole thing back. And I wasn't interested in doing that. And I thought about fragging the sweater right then and there. I put a pull up on Instagram. Most of my close friends were like, knit it. It's fine. It's a beautiful color. I love this color. So I don't want this yarn to go to waste. I do really like the lace. And when I tried it on, it looked okay. Didn't I just like, I didn't want it to look silly. So I kept going. And then the pattern just got worse. Like this just wasn't a good pattern. So my problem here too is because nobody in the sample pictures is an equivalent size to me, this is really, really deep. Like when I wear this sweater, like my arm, it's pretty close to my true armpit, right? When I put this green sweater on, my armpit's like down here by the time I get enough stitches to increase for my bust. I don't love that. And then you get like a ton of extra fabric through the sleeves um, and the sleeve decreases were just like, 
not good. Um, I ended up just kind of doing my own thing, but then there was like so much fabric through here. Another red flag that I forgot about. I gauge wash for this. I gauge wash twice, but there's no um, gauge for the lace. It only gives gauge for stockinette. Red flag number two that I, well, red flag number three that I ignored, really. Um, like all of this is my own fault. I accept that. So yeah, when you're doing a lace sweater and your gauge is in stockinette, well, this is gonna grow. So I got gauge in stockinette, but now this, like, it, it grows so much. So it's just not a good, it's not a great pattern. And I'm disappointed in that. I'm disappointed in myself because I knew better. And I was like, it'll be fine. And now I'm like, this is annoying. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to frog it because I'm just unhappy all around. I thought about just continuing it and having it be an oversized sweater that I like wear around the house. But I feel like every time I put it on, I'm just going to be annoyed. So I'm not going to put it on. And I really love this color yarn. Um, so this is, um, it's Cascade Heathers, Cascade 220 Heathers. This is color 2429. It's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. So I think I might frog it. And guess what? I'm done the whole sleeves, the whole body. I'm on the ribbing. I have six rounds of ribbing left on this sweater. I could have finished it in time, but then as I was trying it on and trying it on, I was just like, oh, I'm not happy with this. So I think I'm gonna frog it and use the yarn um, for something else. I took a class with Nancy um, Knit Sip Happy at Fiddlehead Fiber Festival um, about choosing sweaters that are appropriate for your body size and altering sweaters to make them fit you and um it was really really good um because her sweaters always fit so nicely and we talked about like go no go for even picking a sweater pattern like if it does not have a modeled picture etc i you know i'm i went to this class and paid for it so i'm not going to give it all away but um i ignored a lot of those key things which i picked this one before i took that class and it was very enlightening and so I think that class and like having that conversation um it made me kind of be like why well, keep this pick something different and knit something that you'll really like so this I'm 99% sure is gonna get frogged and that's okay um ooh, a lot of the t <laughs> that was a great angle a lot of the times I'm a process knitter I thoroughly enjoyed the knitting of the lace and you know, I feel like I met the deadline because I know I could have, but it wasn't meant to be. And I will choose better next time and not pick a pattern with 12 finished objects, nobody that looks like my body type and read through, especially like a sweater pattern when you're heavily invested. Like it's a lot of knitting. I should have read. I should have, I should be reading through them. Anyways, um, something else I'm going to frog. I've shown these before. These are socks for Adam. This is the O Canada colorway from, I don't even know. I'll put it on the screen, I can't remember. Um, it is a yarn shop out west that I got. This is a huge skein of yarn. I knit this and I was like, Adam doesn't care, they're just socks. But ever since I started these, I have not picked them up again because as much as I know he won't care and I don't really care about socks, this is driving me crazy. I thought I could live with it. And like, it's just socks, it's just socks for him. Um, and I don't really care, but I'm not knitting it because I'm annoyed by this. So I've taken a step back, I've realized I'm not happy with this. I am going to frog this and do contrasting 
heels, toes, and cuffs. And then I'll get, like, his sock will just be like this. And you won't get this big pooling here. Um, so I think that'll actually encourage me to knit them. So, yeah. That is my second thing that I'm going to frog. Because... It's just sitting idle, not getting knit on. And it's just a vanilla sock. Like, I can whip these up no problem. So, um, yeah, going to frog that too. Because if it's not bringing me joy and I'm not working on it, I don't want to have a bunch of lingering whips that are stressing me out. Um, so, just time to get rid of it. So, that is it for whips. I have quite a few finished objects to show you too. Well, I guess a couple. Um, one I have been hoarding, hoarding for months and it's been killing us not being able to tell you guys about it, but it's finally time. 52 weeks of socks. Nancy Wheeler, Knit Sip Happy, page 240. Hexi diamond socks. Oh, I don't want to show the pattern. But anyways, there we go. Um, so this is an incredible accomplishment. We're all very, very, very proud of her. So um, I test knit these for Nancy and it was a big secret to keep. So Hexi diamond socks. They're absolutely stunning and beautiful. This yarn is so squishy. So this is Yarnaceous Fibers. This is the um, Twin Stitches design colorway that she brought into her shop last year. Um, the Cliffs of Funday, which we're, the, we're on the Bay of Funday here in New Brunswick. Um, so this is her colorway. Very purple. So um, oh, it's got these just diamonds here. Um, that are gorgeous. The texture on this is just amazing. So these are published and we're so proud of her. So I've been hoarding these, not being able to show you guys them for months. We're so excited. The book is out. I picked up my copy from Nancy at the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival and, um, I should have got her to sign it. She snuck away without signing it. So next time I see her. And I haven't had a chance to look through it yet to see if there were other socks to knit in there, but I definitely want to do that. So that's my first finished object. Um, you can get that. I know uh, La Violette and Yarn Indulgences had copies. I'm not sure if they're sold out or not, but um, I know they, they were having them. Okay, my second finished object is a muscle bra hat. So this is Gage Dye Works in Color Wheel. Um, I was knitting this last time, and this was the skein um, that started the whole muscle bra drama that I had about basically starting four different versions of this hat before I could get the right gauge and needle size. So, this one starts gray and goes through all of the colors. Um, there was a couple different purples that I didn't get to because I got to the length. And in retrospect, I should have cut out some of the gray, but I was not knitting this for a third time. So this is the Muscle Burra hat. Use all the Teague. This is my second one. And I've got my third one on the needles, which I already showed you. So it just um, flops in on itself. So you can wear it either way. And I do really love this hat. It's super versatile. Um, I feel like everybody has knit one now. It's really good knitting. And you can either wear it like this slouchy for a beanie or you can, sorry, you can wear it like that slouchy or you can roll up the brim and it, is a beanie with extra um, warmth over your ears. So that is that. 
Okay. Other thing I finished. I've been wanting to knit one of these for a while. This is the Snuggle Down Cowl. It's a scrappy project. These are all of the colors I used. So this is Hedgehog Fibers. Hedgehog Fibers. Mm. Freckled Whimsy. Good Vibrations. Freckled Whimsy. Uh, this is Madeline Tosh. And this is Madeline Tosh. Just held with um, a white mohair broco aerial in ivory. So this is a cowl. <clears throat> I have blocked this. I have not cut my end yet. So it's really, really snuggly and warm. Um, I always feel like there. Anyways, I have enough left over. I got a navy blue mini from my friend Leanne um, because I'm out of this color, but I have enough left over of these colors and I'm going to make my mom one because I've never knit her anything with mohair before, but um, I think she would really like it. Sorry. I feel like that always happens when people try on things with mohair. This was so fast to knit and so fun and so easy. If you're looking for a quick gift knit or something to do with your advent skeins, um, I can't recommend this pattern enough. It was so fast. Like I knit this in a weekend. Um, I cannot believe how quick it was. Um, yeah, so this is by Jules Hill, this pattern. Snuggle down cowl, scrappy. Like I think it's, I want to say 10 grams of each color and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors here. And I just feel like this almost is a fade. Like it works so perfectly. Okay. That, um, I have one more finished object to show you. This was a test knit for Nancy and, um, this is freckled whimsy. I don't have the tag because, no, this is not Freckled Whimsy. This is O Loops. I'll put the colorway down below. So this is O Loops and this is Sweet Georgia. Um, these are called the Tits Up Socks. So can you see my tits right here? I can't even handle it. So Nancy, um, this was a test knit for her. The fifth season and final season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel just came out. Um, and if you watch that show, um, I started watching it on Nancy's recommendation. And when I started testing this, it's really good. I'm on season three. I enjoy it so much. Um, Susie, the manager of Midge on that show, um, Midge is a stand-up comedian. Susie's her manager. Um... Oh God, every time she gets on stage, she says tits up, AKA like put your best face forward. And you know, here you go. Anyways, it's a really, really fun show. Oh my God. I shouldn't have put that cowl on. If you're looking for um, a good show to watch, I think it's on prime. So you can see the tits here and they come in a pair. I can't handle it. Um, and the hashtag on Instagram is like, show me your tits or something like that. I'll put it down below. But once I saw that, I was dying laughing because it's hilarious. So this just is so fun. And I love this heel flap with the garter edge and the toe contrast. So that is my last finished object. Um, four books. I've finished a lot, but I think I'm just going to start to sh tell you the ones I actually like really enjoyed. Um, first one I enjoyed <clears throat> Carrie Soda was back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I love her books as an author. She's such a great writer. Um, I've, I've enjoyed everything she's written. She wrote the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo and I just finished that one. It was really good. And they kind of like, um, 
that one and there's another one that she wrote Malibu Rising Malibu Rising and Carrie Soto kind of you don't have to have read Malibu Rising to read Carrie Soto but if you've read it you'll recognize characters in Carrie Soto is back so I liked that because I've read Malibu Rising before um so I really liked that book I read Educated by Tara Westover, which I'm late to the party on this one. It was really good. Um, I, you've probably all read it by now because I don't know why I haven't. I read Mad Honey by Jodi Picot. Picool and Picot must be Picot. I never know how to say her last name. Um, it was okay. She's not my favorite, but there was a character in this book who... Um, is trans and I wanted to see how she um, portrayed that character and whether she did it justice or not and um, it was interesting I, I enjoyed it um, I see a lot of my well not I have a handful of patients who are um, trans in one of the clinics that I work in so I always like to make sure that I am you know aware of issues that they're dealing with and just I wondered how a mainstream author was portraying a trans character um and a couple of my patients have read the book and recommended it to me just for again just to see how um they're portrayed by a mainstream, you know, bestseller author. So um, I read it and it's been nice being able to chat with a couple of my um, my patients about it. So I enjoyed that one. Um, I read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This book, I really liked it, but it was like a slow burn. Like for a lot of the book and I listened to it on an audiobook. for the first little bit, I was like, let's get to the point. Like it was good and I was enjoying it, but I was like, let's something happen. Uh, and then something happened and I was like, holy shit. And it was really good. Um, and it, I didn't see it coming and it just, it surprised me. Um, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm reading The Thursday Murder Club right now by Richard Olson. That was my last month's book club book. And I should have finished it. I could have finished it because I was off the day of book club. I was so close to being done. But that was one of the days that I was sick and I knew I wouldn't be able to go to book club. And it kind of just like, um, I was, I got a little bit bummed out about it. So I didn't finish it. I kind of just sulked on the couch. Um, but I want to finish it because I'm really enjoying it. And, uh, the feedback from book club was that it was really good. Um, so that's that. And then I bought this for one of my coworkers recently, uh, Abby Jimenez, yours truly. It is like a fluff romance book. Actually, I never buy hard copy books anymore. I usually read them on my e-reader. I don't really know what prompted me to buy the book. I was buying it for her and I just grabbed one for myself too. And I'm, I've been enjoying it. Um, this is the second one in a series. It's part of your world was the first one. And I really liked it. It was cute. It was romantic. It was spicy. So I'm happy to be reading that one. And I have my book marker in here. I just switched to this one. Um, I had a yellow petal head made one in there. And I just switched to this one I got it this weekend at the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival. So that one is in there. Um, I think that's kind of it for books. Can't really think of any other ones I finished recently. And book club book this month doesn't interest me. And normally I would read it anyways, but I'm not going to. <laughs> okay. Caution. Heavy acquisitions ahead. So if you do not want to see acquisitions, thank you for tuning in. We will see you next time. But I did some shopping. Adam, don't watch this part, okay? Um, the first thing I got that I pre-ordered a long, long time ago, they take forever to come, which is totally fine with me, is this fat squirrel bag. 
I brought this to the festival on the weekend and I had like six project bags in here. It is ginormous. Um, it's the library book one. I love it. So right now it's just holding all the crap I've bought. <sighs> okay. So I showed you my yellow petal handmade bags that I got the, the um, backpacking one. This is the trailer one that I ordered with it. So um, when I ordered the rifle paper coat one, I got a discount code. So I purchased this one in the backpacking one. Um, oh, they're so, so well made. Yellow petal handmade. There's those lovely tags and they come with the strap. So I haven't put anything in this one yet. Like, come on. So cute. So there is that. I've gone off the rails a little bit. I admit that. So we, I'm a respiratory therapist and we settled our contract and I got some retro for that. So, um, Part of this, this purchasing is a treat yourself from my retro for working in COVID and working with no contract for several years. And um, so part of that is just because I had some retro. So don't judge me on the acquisitions or judge me. It's up to you. Um, but yeah, this is not normally, wouldn't, this is not normal for me to have this much acquisitions. It's just change of seasons, feeling sick. I definitely am an emotional shopper and having a little bit of freedom with my retro check that came, that is coming. Um, yeah. So, um, who did I order this from? The Wool Baron. She had mini sets on clearance. Um, these were, very, very affordable. Shit Family Reunion. They're Shit's Creek colorways. So these, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I thought these could be, I could add in a color and maybe do like a gift for a snuggle down cowl. Um, sorry about the glare. So those are super cute. And then same with these. I didn't have any specific plans, but they were on such a good sale. These are Shit Family Reunion. This is mini set number two. Um, anyways, so these two came from the Wool Baron. Um, I, I feel like she might not be dying anymore. Maybe she just had a mega sale. I, mm, I gotta look into that because I've had her Advents game before. Anyways, I can't avoid a sale and they're minis and I've been using my blanket and doing a couple mini projects lately. So, um, I enjoyed that. Okay. This was kind of, this was my splurge purchase from my retro. This was like the big one that I had planned to do with my retro. Um, so I like, am such a sucker for the home, a homespun houses colorways. This is hush hush on the plump Merino 7525. Um, but being in Canada, the exchange rate and the shipping is like, like it hurts. I did not even, I looked very generally at the cost of these two, but then I couldn't think about it because this was a special treat. Like for me, this was, um, like, Hey, congratulations on your contract. Here's a treat. This is not an everyday thing for sure. Actually, these are all, I got to retwist these because they're now falling apart. So <laughs> this is the first skein that I bought and I bought these with maybe some test knitting in mind because I, I do need some more sock sets. Um, I'm getting really low because I've been doing a ton of testing and I'm just running out of sock sets. So this is the first one and this was the second one. This is dancing in the street. Oh, like I can't, I love this so much. So those were from a homespun house and she sent along, um, a free mini with it. I don't think there's a colorway on that. And then, um, 
for her Patreon, if you sign up, you get month for a certain tier, you can get monthly minis. Um, so I did sign up for that and I got my first set of monthly minis. These are the March ones. So these are Lavender Haze, Biscuit, and Farmer's Market. So I'm going to put these in my blanket. And actually, I have plans to start a jelly roll blanket with these minis. So um, Adam does like a monthly subscription for a video game that he plays. And I don't have one. And not that it's a competition or anything like that. But... I always like felt guilty before I used to sus subscribe to a different Patreon and um, they just kind of changed their feed and it no longer appealed to me. So I had canceled it over a year ago, but I like the um, fact that I get some minis with this one and I get to use her yarn, which I always love her color sense, but it's just not economical as a Canadian right now to order regularly. So this, I get the Patreon and the ship for free with that tier that I have. So I can live with that. So that is my homespun house. And then um, our local yarn shop, Good Vibrations, started carrying some Jameson and Shetland yarn that they newly got in. And I love to knit colorwork mittens and I like to knit them for gifts. And these are super economical. So I grabbed some Jameson and Shetland yarn to just put in my stash um, for mitts. And you're going to see a color theme, which I didn't even notice. But like, I have a tell. And it's funny because we were at the festival on the weekend. And um, I picked out yarn from Deborah from Yarn Indulgences to knit a stripe sweater. And Leanne got yarn to knit it too. And I had them all in my hand. And she was like, that yarn is exactly your Straya cardigan colors. And like, I had it all paid for. I was showing her my yarn. And she was like, Heather, <laughs> I'm like, I didn't even notice. She pointed it out to me. So clearly I have colors that I like and I stick with them. Um, and then I was at Amanda's booth, sweet skein of mine. And I had in mind that I was going to get a sweater quantity of Daydreamer. I had that plan for weeks before um, going to the festival. And then when we got to the booth, Liam was like, you already have a sweater quantity of that yarn. And I was like, oh, now that you say that, you're right. I bought it at um, an Etsy event before. And to my credit, okay, it sounds bad that I forgot about a sweater quantity of my yarn, of her yarn that I had. But, but... It's like a, it's actually, um, I think this is it. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's this. And so I didn't remember that I, that I had it because I made my, I made a ranunculus with it, but I used like a pinky mohair with it. So, and I'll, I'll put a picture in, but it doesn't look anything like that colorway. So um, that's why I forgot. That's my excuse. And I'm sticking with it. So yeah, I do have a tell. And you'll see that from the next thing that I show you because yeah, now I've lost a ball somewhere. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so this came home with me just to put in my sash. And I ordered these. These are from Rose Hill Yarns. I am, I love teal and I love mint. So why I wanted to figure out my 50 gram weight for socks is because I had this. So this is a 50 gram sanctuary mini skein with um, a 20 gram mini with it, Rose Hill yarns. I love mint. So I didn't want to knit this up until I knew what I was getting into more. Um, and then I couldn't pick whether I wanted the mini skein or the self-striping. So I got both. Again, retro treat yourself. This is not normal for me. Um, so that is what I had purchased before I went to the Fiber Festival. 
Ooh, there's lavender in here. Oh, it smells so good. Um, oh my God, Adam's gonna kill me. No, he won't really kill me, but he's been spending money like crazy on his garden that he's getting going. <laughs> so it's just, I've been really good. I have not purchased this much yarn. So it's a lot and it feels like a lot, but it, w it won't be happening again. So then I went to the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival with my um, friends. We had a great time. Um, I took a class from Nancy. We spent Friday night. We had supper together. We stayed up late knitting. It was like we took over the boardroom and we all just sat around knitting. Um, there was me, Leanne and Christy who I went with. And then Nancy and Deb were there. Um, Yarn Indulgences and Knits of Happy. Sophie and Manon were there um, from La, Vio La Violette and Cozy Meadow. We all, I think that was everybody that knit with us. We all sat around knitting. It was so nice just to like spend time with everybody. We had some wine. Um, I stayed till midnight. <sighs> that was a doozy. It was just the best time. And I had some funds set aside for shopping. And I did. Okay. I had to get this for my yarn room downstairs to put on top of my shelf. And I got red because red is Sawyer's favorite color. And I thought he would like that. This is from Brigadoon um, Farms. It's a little sheep and look at the bomb. Come on. So cute. Um, there was an apron, someone there that sells aprons. And this is a utensil roll. One of the nurses, actually Leanne's aunt that I work with at St. Joe's, she has one of these. And she made one for one of the physicians I work with. And you put your utensils in here. And I love it because I bring my utensils um, from home. Oh, the Apron Girl Boutique. I bring my utensils from home. I don't use the plastic ones at work. Um, but I only have just like a plastic container. And it's not really nice. And this one, I couldn't resist the sugar skulls. And I love it. I just got some utensils to put in it today when I was at Walmart. Got that for my lunch. I wish I had gotten two. Um, just so I could wash this one, but she didn't have any other patterns that I really liked. So that is that. Um, I can't resist a bag. I should never buy a bag again in my life. Like, I think I need to say to my friends, if you see me buying a bag or talking about buying a bag, like snap me out of it because you don't need, I don't need any more. Um, but I can't resist. I can't resist the Rifle Paper Co. <sighs> um, these ones don't have any tags on them. I'll put on the bottom where they're from. They're local. These were all local makers. So this is Rifle Paper Co. And oh, vegan leather on the bottom. Oh, Michelle's Creations. She has tag. I never even noticed that before. Michelle's Creations. So um, this bag is a little bit bigger. I thought it would be good for like a sweater or um, a shawl. She's got lovely blue inside and pockets. And then I thought this would be good um, either for notions, but I have a notions pouch that's my all-time favorite. Or I was going to throw this in my work bag with uh, some drugs <laughs> or like tampons or something um, or both because it's big enough and it's really cute. So, you know, things that you need in your work bag, but you kind of want to keep maybe discreet. So I had those two things in mind when I purchased that bag. Um, and then I'll show you what I got from Amanda. So I didn't buy Daydreamer because I thought I had some unknit at home but I didn't because I already knit it up and I was wearing it in her booth at that time. I didn't even know because of the mohair. Mohair can really change the look of a sweater. So I wore my ranunculus to the festival and I got yarn to make another ranunculus. So um, this is the Being Boho colorway from Sweet Skein of Mine, Amanda, who is just the loveliest human in the world. She's just, I love her yarn. I've been buying it from day one. She had Christmas colorways. I remember I, the Grinch that I bought from 
um, uh, Cricut Cove. I still have my skein downstairs. I haven't knit it yet. And this was a new colorway that she had, Sakura, Sakura. Um, and I love purple. Purple's my favorite color. But I don't have, other than this, I don't have any sweaters in purple. So this is going to be a ranunculus. I have knit two and two is not enough. They're so different every single time that you make them and the mohair just really changes the look. So I think, I think this will be really, really nice together and I'm planning on casting it on soon. So that's for my ranunculus. Um, I got bunny tracks, another sock set to put away for test knitting. Um, because usually like when the test call comes out, I, I have to grab from stash. I don't have time to purchase something usually and get it shipped to me. Um, it's often that I have to find something in my stash to knit. So I am trying to get a few sock sets set aside so that I can pull from. Um, and this is even flow. This is from Amanda too. And I got this for, um, I've been looking for like manlier or um, colors for Adam because sometimes I'll test knit the 72 stitch sock for Nancy. I've got to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, hair. Um, so he, I, I thought he would really like this and I, I'm running out of like skeins that I thought would work for him. So I grabbed this um, with a test knit in mind down the road just to put in my sash to have. And I got some soak. Amanda said this was one of her favorite scents. I've never used soak before. I've only used, um, is it eucalyn? So this is the lacy scent. I haven't even smelled it yet. Um, okay. And then the last thing that I got from Deb at Yarn Indulgences is, this is her sport weight, um, Peruvian Highland wool. It's um, 328 yards for 100 grams. I am going to make a stripes sweater. And this is the color that I, these are the colors that I picked out. And Leanne is right. This is almost identical to my Straya cardigan, which I still haven't finished. Um, but that's okay. I am not mad about it. The stripes will be bigger. The, yeah. I don't care. I have a color. I have a tell. It's all good. It makes me happy. And I love it. So that is what I purchased this weekend, this past weekend at the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival. And I got a new Yeti, which I've actually been drinking water out of. I like, I'm terrible at drinking water. But because my throat has been so dry and I have had such trouble with my voice lately, I'm really trying. So, um... Leanne and Christy both had one of these and they were raving about them. I don't have one of these, but I like ice cold water and I like a straw. So I grabbed one of these on the way home. She told me, Christy told me where she got hers and um, it's been working so far to increase my water consumption and it keeps the ice really cold. Um, anyways, that is it for now. Um, I'm going to go wind up this skein of yarn, which is from Deborah Yarn Indulgences. This is the Sock Marl. Um, it's 80-20. Nancy has a new test knit coming up that she's going to be sending the pattern out for shortly. And I'm going to be knitting this. And I can't wait to see what it becomes. And it is a secret pattern that I can't show yet, but that's the yarn I'm using. And I've had this in my stash since, uh, I think, I don't know, maybe since the last Knit East, I think. So, oh, low battery. Um, so yeah, I have been saving this for just the right thing. And it's going to become socks. So, um, I just came home from Costco and the grocery store and Walmart today. I've been off. Um, I was supposed to be in clinic today, but the person I was covering didn't need the day off anymore. And I jumped at the chance to have a day to myself. We bought Sawyer. He's going to lose his mind. 
Um, we bought Sawyer a Power Wheels ATV today at Costco. Um, he doesn't know that it's coming. Um, so we're charging the battery on that. I set that up. I was in a sweaty lather from that. Um, oh man. And when I get hot, I don't know about anybody else, but when I get overheated, I get cranky. So Adam walked through the door and I was like, you have to take over. You have to take over. I can't do this anymore. I'm cranky. And he was like, go sit down. It's fine. Um, anyways, I'm going to go put all of this yarn away. And um, Adam's on a conference call downstairs. So I guess I better be quiet and sit on the couch and knit so I don't disturb him. Um, yeah. I hope you have a wonderful day. And hopefully it won't be so long next time. Hopefully we are at the end of cold and flu season and I keep my voice. Um, yeah, have a great day everybody and I hope you're knitting something that brings you joy. Bye.